why should you buy this telescope, the white one, instead of any other telescope? I bought this 8-inch Dobsonian and I placed my 12-inch Dobsonian for you to see the difference between both. As you can see, this one is huge comparing to this one. I love my 12-inch. I bought this 8-inch today because it's to be my grab-and-go telescope. I'm sure I will have great adventures with this telescope. And this is the first video from many, from a journey that I want you to live with me. In this playlist, you will get regularly videos with me and this telescope having our adventures. Don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned. So that leads us to the first advantage, huge advantage, portability. With this telescope, I can take it everywhere. I can place it in my car, I can place it in a van, I can place it anywhere and go with it to have fun at start parties or with friends and family. Two, versatility. You can use this telescope yourself and you can help your children if you have or relatives to get into the astronomy world. This is an easy to manage telescope. Any children can reach the eyepiece easily. And in my situation, I will be with my 12 inch here while my children will be around this one. So it's also a good second telescope like I did. I will do many modifications to improve this Dobsonian. Some of them are very important, but I will let this for another video. Three, aperture. Bang for the buck. You, with this aperture, eight inch, a refractor will be much expensive and also you will have to get the mount, but I have to advise you that this is very nice for these situations visual, etc. and planetary imaging too, without tracking. But if you want to hunt deep sky objects, and this is a tool that has that power, you got to have tracking. So, as this is a known go-to, here I'm on board of five more or less, and I don't need go-to, I love star hopping, but I use an equatorial platform in my 12 inch top, which I can use also in this top. So an advantage also from an equatorial platform, if you are thinking in buying it, you can use on any scope that you have. Four, simplicity. As a keep it simple guy, I love that characteristic. Without many stuff around, you just place it, it's light, and you use it straight away. Keep it simple, have a nice telescope like this. Stick with me with the journey with this telescope. The purpose of this channel is to help you to connect with astronomy. I share my experiences and my joy and my modifications and my improvements with the Dobsonians in order for you to catch the ideas and adapt with your thinking, with your own head and adapt to your setup and situation environment. Someone that lives in a city, in an apartment is different that's someone that lives uh, in the country or someone that have this space or uh, just a bit of space or more than this and better than this and uh, a better sky than me. So the situations are different. My purpose is only to inspire you to have this joyness and to have fun and very relaxing moments with the Dobsonian. And I'm sure that with my 8-inch Dobsonian, now I will get all of that. If you're thinking in buying the first telescope, that's the one. Five, smoothness. This is so smooth with the Alta-Z system that Dobsonian has. The azimuth with that Lazy Susan is so smooth, you can adjust. And now with this new system of the altitude bearings, I'm curious to see how this new system acts because now we can balance or manage the balance also through the position in the altitude bearings. As you can see, 
I mount it in a way that it's all down. I will show you three inexpensive and super easy to do mods that will solve two problems you may have in your Dobsonian telescope. Many people aren't aware of them and usually blame other sources. However, I will show you exactly how to detect them and how to fix them. They are very important modifications, especially if you do imaging sessions with a Dobsonian telescope or, of course, with a Newtonian over an equatorial mount. First, let's identify those problems and after that we will solve them. This is not new to me. I had those problems before with my 12-inch Dobsonian and I solved them. However, when I bought my 8-inch Dobsonian, I was hoping it wouldn't have these problems. Well, I was wrong. After some imaging sessions with it, doing EAA electronically assisted astronomy as usual, I noticed that weird light aberration at the left, especially when the moon is up interfering with the image. Light leaks, I thought, again. And that light intrusion come from different points, from the top of the tube, of course, from the aperture, or from any leak in the focuser. At this moment, I was thinking and hoping that was only light leak from the top, which in my situation usually came from the LED light I have right here at the street and it's boosted with the moon when the moon is up and very bright, they mix together and they interfere with my imaging sessions. And it was funny because I knew what to do and went straight away to the store to buy a sheet of foam, black foam, like this one. However, at that moment they were out of stock, so I bought a simple sheet of black cardboard. And just using a belt, what I had at home, I cut the cardboard and placed it all over the tube. Later I ended buying the foam, but I didn't replace it yet. I will do it when the cardboard is damaged, because it's working fine. And it also acts as a dew shield, helping to delay the dew formation on the secondary mirror. Well, things were better, but they were not enough. And again, because I saw this before with the 12 inch Dobsonian, I knew what to do. So I picked my flashlight, the red one, and I went to the focuser. And during the imaging session, I just pointed with the flashlight here and the image turns all red. And just for your information, if I use the camera like this with the spacers, if I point the flashlight, there are no leaks, the image stay black. But only now because I implemented already the solutions. So that's the second problem, light leaks in the focuser. And to solve that is very easy and you can use different options. You can use also the same foam, just stick it with duct tape, a good one, or use another kind of protection. Some people use a tissue, but I don't like that solution. I prefer to have a permanent, nice and clean installation. And that was what I did, it worked very well, and now finally I could have nice and clean images without those aberrations at the corner. Unfortunately, there was yet a third problem to solve, and it was the focuser tilt. This never ends. There are softwares which analyze the focuser tilt, but I use the keep it simple style, <laughs> which is not a vignetting, which is normal in the large sensor cameras, which is that area that you see with a circle. It's the way that vignetting pops on the screen. It's not centered. When it's centered, that means that the focuser has no tilt. And to solve that, again, the keep it simple style, I took off the focuser of the tube and I used the foam as a shim to adjust the tilt. And it worked very well. Now, finally, I can have a nice and clean image again and center it. And I could identify where the problem came from. It was because when tightening the nuts of the focuser, as the tube is not flat, it bend it a bit 
when I received the telescope and I had to tighten them because they were all loosened. So that's a thing that it's important to check in your Dobsonian telescope. However, for the whole performance of your Dobsonian telescope, doing visual or doing imaging sessions, this is not enough. You should check this video right here, where I show you important and very nice mods, easy to do, to really benefit of your Dobsonian power.